There is no other artist quite like Hieronymus Bosch. Whilst da Vinci was finishing the Mona Lisa and Michelangelo was decorating the Sistine Chapel, this Dutch painter was conjuring up nightmarish hellscapes full of grotesque and nonsensical creatures. But why did this artist create such disturbing paintings? Are they the product of a lively imagination or are they the result of a troubled mind afflicted by intense and frightening hallucinations? Let's investigate the paintings of Hieronymus Bosch and get a glimpse of the artist behind his strange and unsettling work. Very little is known about the life of Hieronymus Bosch. Even his portrait, which you can see now, was made 30 years after his death. We do know that he was born sometime during the mid-1400s and probably spent most of his life in the Dutch town of Setochenbos. He grew up in a time of deep religious anxiety. In late medieval Christianity, ideas about sin, death and the devil were becoming more sophisticated, and descriptions of hell, like in Dante's Inferno, were becoming more vivid. There was a genuine fear that demonic forces lived amongst the population, a fear that led to the first European witch hunts, something that would only increase in the coming centuries. This was the spiritual environment that Hieronymus Bosch emerged from, one where devotion and fear were intertwined. It is clear to have affected him deeply, as a preoccupation with sin and punishment pervade his work. Let's start with his most well-known painting, The Garden of Earthly Delights. It's a triptych, with three panels depicting three unusual scenes. The first, on the left here, is based on the biblical story of Adam and Eve. Set in the Garden of Eden, we can see familiar animals like elephants and giraffes, but just below them is a freakish bipedal dog creature. Over here, a frog-mouthed bird eats a toad, and emerging out of this pool are hideous multi-headed reptiles. Even in paradise, there is already a sense of discord, anticipating the horrors that lie ahead. The middle panel is a non-biblical scene featuring hundreds of naked people frolicking in a lush garden. Strange organic structures dominate the background, giving an otherworldly feel to it. The level of detail is astonishing, but highlights include people crawling into this giant egg, a multi-legged dancing owl, and finally, a cute cat-like unicorn. The inhabitants of this panel seem to be indulging in acts of lust and gluttony, two of the seven deadly sins. The last panel is a disturbing picture of hell, with all kinds of eccentric and horrific punishments. At the bottom, we have a pig dressed up in a nun's habit. It's attempting to get someone to sign a pact with the devil. This bird demon consumes its helpless victims and then defecates them into the cesspool below. Over here, we have a demonic choir master leading a dirge, crucifying a man on a giant lyre. It also appears to be tattooing music onto someone's backside. Some have actually put this to music, and it sounds a bit like this. Dominating the centre, we have the so-called Tree Man, named after his stumpy legs. Some believe that this face is a self-portrait of the artist. There are so many interpretations to this piece at large, and all the little scenes have their own theological messages. You could spend hours deciphering even just one of them, but there's an idea that most people do agree upon. It's a warning against lust and the pursuit of physical pleasure. The fear of sin, death and punishment are the subjects of many of Bosch's paintings. This includes The Last Judgment, another triptych where he illustrates the apocalyptic scenes from the Book of Revelation. There are lots of non-biblical elements to this one, like small gnomes and a giant human-bird hybrid, but believe it or not, it's actually not too far off the source material. As we've seen from another video of mine, the original biblical texts include giant human-headed locusts with scorpion stingers. I guess Bosch is along the right lines. Painting after painting, Bosch conjures up horrific scenes, each more nonsensical than the last. A trademark of his artwork are the freakish creatures, which can be found in many of his surviving sketches, one of which includes the tree man seen from earlier. But where on earth did Hieronymus Bosch get his inspiration from? There are many theories, but a popular one claims that he was suffering from intense and frightening hallucinations, an idea which we can explore through this next piece. Many of Bosch's paintings focus on St. Anthony. He was a hermit monk that lived in the Egyptian desert during the 4th century. 
According to Christian legend, he was often tormented by demons. This painting, The Temptation of St. Anthony, is characteristically Bosch. It depicts the trials this saint is rumoured to have endured, featuring a plethora of monsters, including this floppy-eared, ice-skating chicken demon, my personal favourite. Bosch made two other paintings about St. Anthony, more than any other saint. This detail could be of significance. You see, there is a disease known as St. Anthony's fire. You can contract it by eating a poisonous black fungus called ergots that grow on rye crops. Symptoms include sores, convulsions, and a fierce burning sensation in limbs and extremities. But another unusual effect of eating ergots are the frightening and overpowering hallucinations that can last for hours at a time. They are believed to be behind the many dancing plagues recorded throughout the Middle Ages. Whole towns would unexplainably dance all day and night, with some dropping dead from exhaustion. In the mid-20th century, it was discovered that when ergots are baked in an oven, they transform into a form of lysergic acid dithalamide, also known as LSD. Some believe that Bosch actually suffered from St. Anthony's fire and may have based his paintings on his own frightening hallucinations. Creating so many paintings to St. Anthony may have been a form of devotional prayer, done so in the hopes that the saint would rid him of his debilitating illness. It's an interesting theory, but one that's also very difficult to prove. As mentioned already, we know practically nothing about Bosch's life, so it's unknown whether he actually suffered from this disease. The same goes for the arguments that suggest Bosch was simply insane. There just isn't any evidence to either prove or disprove it. I think there's another explanation, one with a bit more evidence to back it up. Hieronymus Bosch was not the only artist painting demons. Even Michelangelo did a painting of St. Anthony, where he's being lifted up into the air by grotesque monstrosities. Both artists come from a much longer tradition, the weird world of medieval Christian art. Delving into illustrated Bibles and early animal encyclopedias reveals a whole collection of strange and frightening imagery, horrific descriptions of hell, grotesque monsters and demons galore, all of which predate Bosch and his Renaissance contemporaries. In the margins of many illuminated manuscripts, you can find all sorts of bizarre monsters. Some of them share a passing resemblance to Bosch's work. It's possible, likely even, that he reproduced these creatures in his own work. This is certainly the case with that giraffe as seen earlier. Art historians believe that he based it on an illustration found in an early travel log, comparing the two and they share a striking resemblance. People were drawing hell and demons long before Hieronymus Bosch was, but you could say that he perfected it. A true Renaissance artist, he took the flat illustrations of old and transformed them by adding perspective and vivid colour, bringing them to life through his ghoulish imagination. Now, of course, not all of Bosch's paintings are demonic hellscapes. As with many painters of his time, he made artworks about the life of Jesus or things that he saw around him. But even in the more mundane topics, you're never too far away from spotting a beastie or two. It is unfortunate that we know next to nothing about the life of Hieronymus Bosch, only a shadow of the man through his paintings. It was clear that he had a dark and vivid imagination, and that matters of religion and morality clearly occupied his mind. After his death in 1516, the next generation of Dutch artists were clearly inspired by Bosch's work. In the centuries to follow, artists began to see him as an early pioneer of surrealism, being one of the first to draw directly from his imagination. Hieronymus Bosch's dark apocalyptic visions continued to transfix all those who gaze on his paintings and offer bleak glimpses of what awaits us in the afterlife. Hey, thanks for watching. Hieronymus Bosch is one of my favourite artists, so I'm thrilled to be able to make this video. I really hope you enjoyed it too. If you like this video and want to see more, why not subscribe? A like and a comment also go a really long way. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.